before the Hammond City Council on July 16, 2013 to order, please. Johnny Blunt? Here. Jason Hood? Here. Bobby Mark? Here. Lamar Marshall? Here. Mike Williams? Here. Okay, uh, first item is an ordinance to amend the policy and procedures manual of the City of Hammond approving the civil emergency pay policy. Mayor Foster. Thank you, Mr. President, to the council. Um, it's no secret that when Isaac came through here, there were some differences of opinion about how the, quote, emergency procedures, unquote, uh, should be handled. Um, I got with Loretta Severin, and, and Loretta was good enough to help me to uh, generate an emergency pay policy. And we took the emergency pay policy that Loretta had, had originally worked up, and we met with the Fraternal Order of Police, the police union, and the fire union, all of whom are represented here tonight. Um, we have come up with a, an emergency pay policy that we would like to present to the council and make it a part of the uh, policies and procedures manual for the city of Hammond. Uh, you do have a copy of the um, uh, civil emergency pay policy in your uh, book. I believe it's in the back under ordinance, if I'm not mistaken. Would it, you it, it would be under new business? No, I'm sorry. Yeah, final adoption. Final adoption of the ordinance. So, everyone find it. So as I go through here, I just want to point out a few things, uh, if I could, and I will refer to these by pages one, uh, one, two, and three. On page one, uh, the main part of page one the notification is, is that the mayor whoever he or she is uh, is the one that will be the one that will declare an emergency um, there was a lot of discussion about this but of course the mayor is the chief administrative officer of the city so it would be only appropriate for him or her uh, to be the one to make such a declaration um, the mayor uh, is in charge of notifying the department heads uh, the local office of emergency preparedness of the dates and times of the civil emergency that he or she has declared not just the beginning of the emergency but also the conclusion of the emergency um, we have outlined essential employees and if you would turn to page please to page two Employees and essential services include sworn law enforcement personnel, communicators, fire personnel, director of administration, public works employees, public works supervisors, and department heads citywide. Um, if you look down in the, uh, in the next category, the variations of, of emergency situations, of course, there will be different emergencies. And when you talk about emergencies, primarily you think about hurricanes. Uh, but we do have from time to time, for example, a few years ago, you may remember we had eight inches of snow and that was declared as an emergency. So there are different types of emergencies and uh, the, difference, uh, uh, the differences of each emergency will be taken into consideration. Um, on the civil emergency pay, um, we have designated and we're asking the council to agree that essential non-exempt employees that perform duties during the emergency shall be paid at two times the regular hour hourly rate for all workers for all hours and this is important and I would like to reiterate this several times be paid at two times their regular regular hourly rate for all hours worked during the declared civil emergency pay period. Uh, these hours uh, shall count towards overtime. So there is a possibility uh, that someone could be paid as much as two and a half times their regular pay during case of emergency. If you'll skip down one paragraph, compensatory time off leave accrual or other additional benefits, and this is very important, other additional benefits will not be permitted for the declared civil emergency pay period for employees not reporting to work for any reason. 
this was part of the overall process and it looking and looking at the emergency pay policy and I believe if I'm not mistaken and they can correct me if I'm wrong they are in agreement the uh, both the, the unions the police union of uh, Sternwater police and the fire union agrees that it's those people that are working that should be paid this policy has not been developed uh, as a holiday pay this is for payment of hours worked during an emergency uh, the policy does go on to uh, define uh, how other employees will be paid uh, and they will be paid based on their regular pay that if they were scheduled to come to work again if they were scheduled to come to work and are not able to come to work because of the emergency they will be paid their regular pay however I want it to be emphasized that if they were not scheduled to be at work and don't come to work they will not be paid they will not accrue any additional benefits and that's outlined in the last sentence of this of, of the uh, civil emergency pay policy at the very bottom of page three any employee who is not scheduled to work for whatever reason and does not work during the emergency period shall receive no additional compensation or benefit. The emergency period shall not be considered as a holiday. Uh, if the council does approve uh, this emergency pay policy, then we will be going to civil service, asking civil service to adopt uh, this same policy so that we can put it into effect. Um, be glad to answer any questions or open it up to anyone else in the public. Okay. Do we have any questions from the council? I have, I have one question, Mr. President. Yes, sir. Mr. Mayor, uh, just, just for clarification, uh, uh, and first of all, I, I'm, I, I'm glad to see that we have a, a, a comprehensive <coughs> policy. I appreciate your effort and the effort of the personnel department to, uh, to create this new policy. Uh, based on last year's uh, conversation. Uh, as far as uh, workers' compensation is concerned, if an employee is out on workers' comp um, um, and uh, if an employee is out on work, workers' comp would not be affected by this at all, right? That is correct, sir. Right. <clears throat> okay. So, uh, because, of, well, obviously, if they're on workers' comp and, and, they, and they can come to work because they're on modified duty, and then if they're not able to come to work, they're going to just receive the same benefit they would have received had they come to work. As they would receive their workers' comp, comp benefits. Workers comp yes, benefit. Right. So um, I read through it, and, um, and it, it appears that, that you, uh, it looks like a good personal policy. So I think that's a, I think it's a good step in the, in the, in the right direction. Any other council questions on this item? Are there any public questions or comments on this item? Come on up, sir. Thank you, Mr. President, members yes, of the council. Uh, my name is George Bergeron, address 303 East Thomas Street, Hammond, Louisiana, and I am also the president of the local Fraternal Order Police. Um, we did meet with the mayor several times, both all three organizations. Um, we did need a policy in place, um, so there were no mix-up or confusions like we've had uh, in the past. Um, after several meetings, we sent the, the draft out to all of our members. They read it, or should have read it, I should say, and uh, we are in full support of this policy as it's that right. Thank you. Thank you. Come on up, sir. Doral Miley, Hammond Firefighter Association, Post Office Box 582, Albany, Louisiana. I am a member of the Hammond Firefighters Local 2361, and our local is also in support of this ordinance. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Come on up, sir. <coughs> Good evening. Charles Delaberto, 201 Natural Street, President of Hammer Local 345 Police Union. And we all have a great concern about this also. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Any other public 
to amend ordinance number 2222 and to provide relative to the rotating record law. Uh, I, I told you a little bit about this uh, whenever we introduced it uh, last meeting. I asked Andre to help me with this. This simply would amend uh, where somebody would at least have to have a business domicile in Tampa Hill Parish to get on our record laws for the police department or the fire department, whoever needs to call a record from the city. Uh, a neighboring parish does the same thing, so I uh, thought it only fair that we follow suit. There was one or two that, that are on a lot of record logs that are not local, maybe not too far from here, but they're not local, and some of the record companies took exception to it, so that's why I'm asking to amend the item. Any questions, public questions or comments about this item? Any questions? Okay. Oh, come on up, Mr. Delberto. How long did it have to respond to us? If you have a crash, you talk about tow truck service, right? Yes, I believe it's 20 minutes. Is that right? 15 or 20 minutes? If, if they're in sure. Roseland, would they be able to reach us within 20 minutes? None of that's being changed. Uh, none of the, the only thing that's changed in this ordinance is that uh, to be on the record log, you have to maintain, have a business domicile here in the parish. All, everything else, all your other protocols have changed. There are some measures where if they fail to timely respond, then they could be subject to removal just like you have now. Yes, sir. Thank you. And the exceptions, again, Mr. President Wallace. Thank you. The, the exceptions that you, the amendment that you, it just it only it only affects that they have to have a business domicile. Whereas if they are in Springfield and that's where their business is located, they cannot get on the city of Hammond's record law. Uh, but you, I thought I heard you say there was an exception that you went to. No, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. no, no exception. <laughs> so they have they could be they can have a home office in Springfield, but if they have a domicile location in Hammond then they can actually, mm -hmm. they can be on the law. They have to have a regular place of business. Right, they have to have a location that happens. Yes. So they can be anywhere as long as they have a domicile. Yeah, and, 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 they, and they can have other businesses in another parish, but they have to have maintain them here. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Okay, uh, we'll move right into our regular scheduled meeting for July 16, 2013. Roll call, please. Johnny Blunt. Here. Jason Hood. Here. Bobby Martin. Here. Lamar Marshall. Here. Mike Williams. Here. All right. Uh, Mayor, will you ask prayer for sure. Everyone, please stand. Let us pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful day and this wonderful city. We thank you for the opportunity that we can meet today as free Americans so that we can discuss the challenges and the uh, obligations that this council and this administration has to our citizens in the city of Hammond. We pray that you will lead, guide, and direct us to make decisions that are pleasing in thy sight. It's in thy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Mr. Delbarco, would you lead us in the pledge, please? Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God. few little things. Uh, first of all, I do want to rec uh, recognize Christopher Martin, who is now representing the uh, Daily Star. Uh, I did have a, an email today from William Carroll, and he said he misses us already. <laughs> we'll see how far that goes. I do want to report that, uh, that the old Baton Rouge Highway project is, is moving along. Uh, Councilman Marshall, it's over in your district, and I believe that uh, everyone should be very pleased with the overlay that DOTD has done. Just to give the council and the public a little bit of a background, uh, in 2008, uh, we were empowered, the council em empowered us to accept a trade of property, uh, and this is how it came about that Chauvin Drive was created. 
Uh, in the agreement that we had with DOTD, uh, they were, we agreed to give up the property, which is now Chauvin Drive, for that portion of the highway, which was then Old Baton Rouge Highway, and is still the old Old Baton Rouge Highway. Um, uh, when, when it came up for an exchange in 2012, last year, and they sent all of the documentation to us, uh, we did indicate to DOTD that the road was in really bad condition and it was not in the best interest of the city of Hammond to accept a road that was in such poor condition. Uh, they did indicate to us that they would be repairing the road prior to our moving forward with the acceptance of the swap of land. Um, if you've been down the road, Councilman, I believe it's in fabulous shape, and so we will be moving forward uh, with the trade, uh, the official trade of um, that property. Uh, the other thing that I do want to mention is tomorrow there is an orientation session for something called Tangi Connect. Uh, this is at the Louisiana Workforce Conference Center, and if there are any young men or women uh, between the ages of 17 and 25 that are unemployed or believe that they're underemployed, uh, uh, we do recommend uh, highly to them this program, which is actually sponsored uh, by the Hammond Area Economic and Industrial Development District. Thank you, Mr. President. Are there any new businesses that would like to be recognized? Come on up. Please give us your name and address for the record, please. Good afternoon. My name is Liberta Frazier. Um, I'm the owner of a and Printing and Graphic Design. Um, we're located at 1010 Venus Avenue behind the old Swagman. What I do, I, I'm specializing in doing t-shirts, um, caps, car, and business commercial decals. Oh. So that's what I do. So are you, are you next to the, um, right there? By the, um, I'm right place. there. Excuse me. Are you by the uh, restaurant over there? Or? There's a Chinese restaurant behind, in front of me. I'm behind the uh, Party Universe, okay. Party City. I'm behind in the back of 1010. Good. Okay. Ma'am, is it E and L Print? A and L Print. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you, thank you for coming. All right, thank you. Be sure to talk to our purchasing department and get on our bid list. Um, <laughs> <coughs> okay. Uh, approval of minutes. Johnny Blunt. Aye. Jason Hood. Aye. Bobby Martin. Aye. Lamar Marshall. Aye. Mike Williams. Aye. Motion approved. Okay. There are no old resolutions. So we'll move right into new business. Number one, a resolution to authorize Holiday Inn located at 1819 Southwest Railroad Avenue to get a high and low alcohol permit. The new owner is Premium Hospitality 2 LLC. Ms. Jean. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, this is obviously the Holiday Inn, and what has happened is that one of the officers in the previous LLC that was ownership has broken off, and they've created a new uh, LLC, so that entails new ownership for us. Everything else stays the same. Nothing has changed. Everything is in order. And uh, we're coming to y'all and asking for you to approve the alcohol for tonight. Do you have anybody with you? I do have a representative. Would you come up, please? And he'll be glad to answer any questions you'll have. Would you give us your name and address, sir, please, for the record? Sure. Good afternoon. My name is Brad Parrish, um, 2019 Louise Street, South Louisiana. Uh, Brent, I don't know if you were here when y'all first opened, if you came and we gave you our normal spiel. I was not. Okay, uh, and this is kind of a different uh, location for this type of thing, but we do ask that somebody come and, and let you be on the record and make sure that you've got a copy of the, our local ordinance for selling alcohol and to let you know that the uh, police chief is very diligent. He will send somebody in to check you and uh, make sure that you're not selling to somebody underage. That is, that is our big focus here. So sure. we just would like to get you to come and put you on the record. Sounds great. Do you have any questions for us? I don't know. Any comments or questions from the council? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Right, thank you. Pleasure of the council. So, Second. Johnny Blunt? Aye. Jason Hood? Aye. Bobby Martin? Aye. Lamar Marshall? Aye. Mike Williams? Aye. Motion approved. <coughs> 
Okay, number two, a resolution to consider and take action with respect to adopting a resolution declaring the intention of the City of Hammond, the Council of the, the City of Hammond, State of Louisiana, acting as the governing authority of the City of Hammond, State of Louisiana, known as the City, to issue in the name of the City revenue bonds in an amount not to exceed $5 million for the purpose of constructing and acquiring improvements to the sewage system of, of the issuer generally describing said bonds and the security therefore authorizing the newspaper publication of a notice of such intention setting forth a date and a time when said governing authority will meet in an open and public session to hear any objections to the proposed issuance of such bonds and providing for other matters in connection therewith. Mr. Grant Schluter. Thank you, Grant Schluter with Foley Udell. This is the first step in the bond issuance process to evidence the loan from DEQ. It's a low interest loan for the five million. The uh, interest rate is uh, 0.45 of 1% and there's a 0.50 administrative fee, so the total uh, rate to you is 0.95 of 1%, so less than 1%. Um, DEQ is requiring that we utilize certain statutes that require a public hearing in connection with the issuance of the bonds. This is a resolution that authorizes that notice of intention, uh, the publication of a notice, and sets forth the time and place, date when you will meet and hear any comments or objections to the issuance of the bonds. We have inserted August 20th at 5.30 p.m., which I understand is a regular council meeting date. Uh, the resolution also authorizes application to the State Bond Commission for approval of the bonds. Uh, they will be sewer revenue bonds secured by the revenues of the sewer system. And uh, if there's any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Any questions? He said this was the first step. Lacey, do you agree with that? <laughs> I was very careful to say in the bond issuance process. <laughs> I understand there's been a great deal of work done. <laughs> okay. I have a motion from Councilman Blunt. Second. Johnny Blunt. Aye. Jason Hood. Aye. Bobby Martin. Aye. Lamar Marshall. Aye. Mike Williams. Aye. Motion approved. Very Thank much. You, it's good to see you again. Thank you. Thanks, Brad. Be careful. Final adoption of ordinance. Number one, final adoption of an ordinance of an ordinance to amend the policy and procedures manual for the city of Hammond approving the civil emergency pay policy. So Johnny Blunt. Aye. Jason Hood. Aye. Bobby Martin. Aye. Lamar Marshall. Aye. Mike Williams. Aye. Motion approved. Number two, final adoption of an ordinance to amend ordinance number 2222 and to provide relative to the rotating record law. So moved. Second. Johnny Blunt. Aye. Jason Hood. Aye. Bobby Martin. Aye. Lamar Marshall. Aye. Mike Williams. Aye. Motion approved. There is no introduction of ordinance, so we have a motion to adjourn. Aye. All in favor? Aye. Aye.